Governor Bobby Jindal was elected to U.S. House of Representatives in 2004 and has served as governor of Louisiana since 2007. Governor Jindal, if you are the next American president, I think most people would agree you'd be coming into a very divided America on race relations, income relations, a lot of talk about who has how much and how much money and who doesn't and what you do about that. How can you unify this country? Jack, I'm so tired of this president and the left trying to divide us. You're exactly right. They try to divide us by gender, by race, by income, by geography. Look, we're all Americans. We're not hyphenated Americans. We're not African Americans or Asian Americans or rich Americans or poor Americans. We're all Americans. This president's done an awful job. The left likes us to see ourselves as victims. It benefits them politically as president. I'm going to unify the American people and say, look, we all benefit when we grow the economy. We all benefit when we shrink the size of the federal government. This president's trying to turn the American dream into the European nightmare. He's trying to make us more dependent on government. Give Bernie Sanders credit. At least he's honest enough to call himself a socialist. Hillary Clinton, President Obama, they're no better. They're just not honest enough to call themselves socialists. So as president, I'll unite the American people. No more hyphenated Americans, no more divisions. I want to come back to balancing budget making Washington work for us again. I think there's this feeling that almost everyone, regardless of their political affiliation, would agree that Washington is not working for America. In fact, it may be working against us. You have a good story to tell. We have a few other governors here have a good story to tell. Balancing the budgets, cutting the deficit, growing jobs. How do we believe that you can actually go to Washington if elected and change the culture of Washington to actually balancing budgets and making the American people feel good about our government again. Jack, that's a great question. Two things. One, we've got a lot of talkers we need to do her. So we've reduced, we've cut the size of our budget in Louisiana 26 percent. We've cut over 30,000 fewer state bureaucrats than the day I took office. I had Democratic majorities in the House and the Senate my first term. Eight credit upgrades, top 10 state for private sector job creation. In D.C., even the Republicans talk about simply slowing the growth of federal spending. That's not enough. We've got a bunch of math deniers in D.C. in both parties. We do need to shrink the size of the federal government. This election is very simple. Do you measure prosperity in the government sector or the real world? Hillary Clinton measures it in the government sector. We measure it in the real world. Secondly, it is also important that we get rid of this permanent political class in D.C. We absolutely need term limits. We have these politicians that go and live there and becomes a career. They become highly paid lobbyists. Not only do we need term limits, we need to stop them from being lobbyists, pay them a per diem. Jack, I'd pay them every day they stay outside of D.C. rather than every day they go to D.C. Make them live under the same rules they passed for the rest of us. They all loved Obamacare until their exemption was taken away. Then they didn't like it so much. New Hampshire recently, the governor and the adjutant general of the National Guard decided against arming recruiters and our National Guard or troops here domestically as when they're abroad, as you know, they can carry a sidearm and protect themselves in an embassy or a center. Should we be arming troops here in New Hampshire and in your state of Louisiana and around the country at these bases and recruiting centers given the lone wolf terror threat? Absolutely. I signed that executive order already in Louisiana allowing our adjutant general to arm our National Guardsmen. Our commander in chief, our president, needs to do the same for our active military. We shouldn't have these gun-free zones. The president went to the Pentagon and said, we're not going to beat ISIS with guns. He said, it's a generational conflict. We have to change their hearts and minds. Jack, I'm glad that that police officer in Texas had a gun in Garland, Texas. If General Patton and Eisenhower had said World War II is going to be a propaganda war, the French would be speaking German. Absolutely, let's arm our military. Briefly, I'd like to take the president his word with the, with the Iranian deal that it's the only way to stop Iran from getting a bomb. Do you agree or disagree? And what would your plan or deal with Iran be? absolutely disagree. This is a bad deal. He's declared war on trans fats and a ceasefire with the largest state sanctioned sponsor of terrorism. Look, a good deal would say anytime, anywhere inspections, would say no centrifuges, no enriched uranium, would say they have to cut off ties to Hamas, Hezbollah, and terrorist groups. They have to recognize Israel's right to exist. They have to free those American prisoners. We will only, and no plutonium pathway, we will only gradually lift sanctions, not uh, immediately Syria hate it, loves it. Israel hates the deal. That's tell you, that tells you all you need to know when our friends hate, right. hate it and our enemies love Thank it. Thank you, Governor.